planning, vasectomy, um, vasectomy, you know, vasectomy. Any more? <laughs> if anybody, anybody that says you don't <laughs> compare X, I don't compare X. Hmm? I don't. Jesus, what you want? You want me? Beautiful, beautiful people. It's great to be back again. <laughs> it's yeah, good I to think, be back again. I think the conversation was so interesting last week, so we had to break into two parts. I'm, I'm happy for part two. I can't wait for the next questions. I yeah. Hope, I hope there are questions I can. So answer. guys, if you have not seen the one for last week, please, I'm going to put in the link. You know, up here. So try and check it out. <laughs> Let us get into the questions for this week. I'm going to be asking him questions girls are afraid to ask guys, questions girlfriends are afraid to ask their boyfriend. So yeah, sit back and enjoy. First question What do you think about girls asking, you know, guys out on a date? Like, how would you have felt if those times when you were taken for her to ask me out? I just come around and I was like, not, I wasn't taking for her to ask me like, out. You, you were taken for her to ask me out. Babe. We started the first time we ever got to exchange communication. Was well, January? No, I, I was, he asked me out in, in December. January was the first time. Although then you January, know, we're not really in, talking. We're not talking, talking, talking as much. Talking like I was in a relationship then. Yeah. I was in a yeah, relationship then. So two of us meeting was okay. Don't no, no, don't no, like the hour. Our, our <laughs> we met two is from that day. But we we're not talking about me. We're not going to do another question because I'm going to okay. take forever again. So, again. What, what, was, what was the question like? I forgot. What, how do you. Okay, a lady asking a guy, a guy out. out. Well, um. I, so, again, it's, it's relative, it depends on the guy, and it's going to be tough to answer for every guy, right? But for me, I don't think there's anything wrong in a lady asking me out on a date in the sense that, oh, okay. Want to take me out? I mean, I've had someone of us take me out. I want to date day. you, like I oh. want to date you. I want us to be in a relationship. relationship. Oh, like oh, okay. Oh, oh you know, you said you said like um, asking you out on the date, not like yeah. asking yeah. to yeah. be in a relationship. Yeah. Okay. A guy, a, a lady, as well. so. Uh, funny enough, funny enough, like I've been in that kind of situation where, in fact, I think more than once, I've been in that situation like two times where you know. A two ladies yeah, like a different time. that is see that is just a clue don't do it don't do it for me i believe that it's a no no if i like a guy i give you green lights if you not take the green light please have that call another guy will come there are many fishes in the ocean yeah <laughs> well i mean i've seen i've seen ladies ask a guy out and and it's, it's would you encourage it well. but for me I would not encourage it. Yeah, because the reason is because they are being here. They are very egoistic. Yeah, so like I would because as a guy for me, I would it would sound weird. Like after like maybe five years, you are counting back and say who asked you out. And I'll be like she was one that asked me out, and then the guy will be like, and be like oh, Jesus Christ, you're so lame, <laughs> you know. But but that's that's like that's like on an ego part, right? But I think the main reason why I don't think it's it's safe or it's a appropriate for a lady to ask a guy to date her is because of guys are not every guy is i don't use the word sensible but not every guy knows how to treat a woman i think that's the word not every guy even like a guy might be a good guy might be a, might be with good morals but he doesn't know how to treat a woman right so when it when in such situation it might be like hey this woman is trying to this woman is asking me out and then as a result you begin to take advantage of that and then you take advantage of her you make her do things that you know you don't like you would not normally do you know because you just feel like oh she was so it makes you sell you sell yourself cheap yeah, yeah. yeah you sell yourself cheap by asking a guy out like steve harvey will say oh yes i know steve harvey like and i know people will always go back to his uh, the fact that he has had um two divorce in his life is on his third marriage and the likes but I think you know as he has grown older, he has become much wiser, and he's, he's one of the guys I really, really respect on love issues, love matters, and relationship. So I listen to him a lot. Um, you know, Sivavi will say that guys naturally we are hunters. So when a guy likes you, like yes, maybe a shy guy, 
But as a lady, you just, like you said, do enough to show him the green light. The lady, your responsibility in any, you know, in any entanglement or to be relationship is to give enough hints to the guy that I like you. If you ask me out, I will say yes. Yes, I might do initial shakara, but I will finally say yes, right? Everyone and that's. Work. I need to do plenty shakara. I'm doing it, but... Yeah, but let's <laughs> turn it to law. I, I do my work very well before I strike. So that's hey, that. Jesus, you're proud. Hi. Well, yeah, so like that that's it really. I don't think a lady should ask a guy because you never know how you know the guy treats you. Most guys know how to treat a woman. And naturally we guys are the hunters. You know, let the hunter hunt. You know. When I mean hunt, I don't mean it in a demeaning way so that you know before feminists to come after. Hey, next question. How do you feel about female body here, yeah, like me having ear yeah, all over? Nah. Never no, calm down for me to finish that though. Nah. Only guys are fine. Even even I even I don't like guys being hairy. I don't like being unnecessarily hairy. Um sometimes my like no, I just feel it gives me Yeah, I mean I'm not like I don't have anything against hairy people. So that it doesn't look like oh I'm coming I'm body shaming or coming across as um, as abusive, but like I I think I think I oh, let me just put it this way it's be- I think I prefer you know no air than air like I prefer no air than air. Okay, the next question I was going to ask if looks matter, but I think we've we've talked about that you know. So um, some questions. So what do you think looks matter? I think it looks matter to a point. It's it depends like to an extent. It's not the be on an end of like everything. It's not like the so you can suck No. So straight one. No, no, it's not it's, okay. It's not the alpha and omega of like the decision about dating someone. I think you force is important. Like because in many cases, right, people people tend to because I, we are Christians mm-hmm. and sometimes we tend to over spiritualize the concept of you know dating, relationship and marriage. Now I'm not don't get me wrong, it's necessary to ensure that you know you have that peace of mind that you know that you're with the right person, right? But in many cases, before you say you like someone, you see the person first, right? So it's the physical attraction that draws you close. Oh, you see this person and say, oh, I like this lady, you want to get close, right? Before you now even begin to uncover, you know, what's her character like, what's her philosophy about life, the two of you, you know, gel and things like that. So I think to that point, looks uh, looks will be very important, which is why you should dress well, which is why you should come across as um, elegant. Look good and dress well, come across as carry yourself well. I think that's enough physical attraction. So I think to that point, looks up. Uh, I'm going to ask this question personally to you, then you answer for you know, guys. Okay. <laughs> Afterwards, what about being married? What worries you? For me, two things money and babies. <laughs> Whenever I think about marriage, I think about money and I think about babies, you know, being pregnant, having to, you know, take care of your baby and all those things. But what well, about being I married? Think, worries, worries I think the two things that worry me the most about marriage, particularly at the early stage, because I believe I don't know if that's the people people tend to say the more you go into marriage, maybe the more difficult it becomes. I don't know that maybe the love start, the start diminishing. But I think from my perspective, I'm, I feel like the more you go, the easier it may become. Right? I don't know that's why I think I'm not married, you are not married, so I really can't speak so much to that. But, but that's what we wish for. But that yeah. but that's what we wish for, yeah. Yeah. So I think for me. And two things I'm worried about. First thing is money, particularly at the early stage. You know, we are always when you get married. In many cases, you are probably maybe your late twenties. You know, for most guys, maybe early, 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 maybe your mid twenties, or you know, you know. So in many cases, right, you are the probably the early phase of your career, or if you're an entrepreneur, your business is still young. So you don't really have that solid except you are from a rich family and the like but you don't have a a tank of money somewhere that you have built over time right so that could be a concern that could be something that scares so that's something that scares me actually right because right we are you know we're still relatively young and um it's not like we've spent 
we've done, we've had about 10 years of working and we did well for that time, right? So I think that's one thing that, that is a worry for me, money. I mean, we're not poor, but like, we're doing fine for our level. Um, but it's something that would that would be a concern in the sense that do you feel you have enough if there's a major life crisis which you know, we pray does not happen, you know, how will you cope with that and things like that. And then the second thing is particular to the two of us. I think it's more of like because I'm used to you always like like to have your attention. <laughs> like because in the early start, in any part of the marriage of marriage, mm-hmm. right, it will literally be two of us alone in the whole house you know and i'm the kind of guy that i've grown up used to being on my phone used to being on my laptop used to like so you're scared of my attention seeking self no so i'm not scared of your attention i'm scared of the fact that i would only you know we've talked about it so many times talked about it today i think or yesterday right i'm always scared of am i giving you enough attention that you like right because i can get carried away when i'm on my phone where I can be on my phone for two hours, three hours straight without talking to anybody, right? And I know that it will just be two of us. So do, actually, that has always played on my mind. And I try, like, when we're around each other, I always try to consciously, like, even though it's not natural for me to disturb, like, I will try to consciously disturb you, like, use my leg to hit you, you know, and things like that, just to make you know that, like, I'm with you. you know. <laughs> so I think those are the two things. But for generally, I think money, money is one of the things that that um, would make a guy, you know, worried about marriage. I think number two would be. Hmm, I think money is always the number one thing. I think number two would be. I think it would be about the future. I think the uncertainty of the future is one thing that's you know, like so if, you, if you're going to be together forever or something like that. No, no, not even if you're going to be together forever. I think in the case of like what does the future hold? Like all of my future plans. You know, sometimes people have some plans, they say, Oh, I want to do this before we my getting married, I want to do this. and then unfortunately they are not able to do those things. And then suddenly they they now get to a point where they have to get married. Because Auntie is already saying time is going, like, are you going to give me the ring or you know? And then somehow, somehow they have to understand, make compromise and get married. Right? So the fear now becomes as a guy, you start thinking, ah man, I so what you gonna achieve all these things and so I think that so if you're going to ask me actually that would have been my number three. But I think for for most guys, for most guys is one and is that first one money and then the second one, you know not being certain of what but the I think the third one matters too because a lot of guys run for marriage because they, they want to make all the money before they yeah. get married and they want to achieve everything they want to achieve and I think I should even ask that question do you think it's actually you know um how should I put it like a real thing for that you should for me I believe that okay you should have found yourself then for the woman she should have found herself you know be on the path of something or definitely be doing something be doing sure. something is very important to me you know but do you think that um for guys it's they believe that we should make the money do you think it's actually a good thing to wait because i definitely have somebody that waited and waited until it was close to 40 and still the money was not that you know so what do you think about that it's be very fast <laughs> okay yeah so i think i think is not really composing you make all the money in the world. So it depends relatively, it's relative. I can't answer this question for everybody. So it depends on the life you want to live, right? So you set for yourself, oh, this is standard of life I want to have, the standard of life I want for my kids. And that's the mistake people make. People get married and think you just have to have kids immediately, right? Kids that will make, um, kids that will make marriage expensive. That's the truth. Kids that will make marriage expensive. If you take kids out, marriage and marriage is not being married to someone doesn't necessarily make it extremely expensive. Yes, like you mentioned, have something you're working on. Have your garden you're attending to as Adam, as Eve, have your own assignment, you know. I believe everybody should have their garden, whether you're Adam or Eve, have your garden. And you know, because for me, but personally for me, I feel like one of the ways I can show you love is to help you cultivate your garden. Right? And one of the ways you can show me love is to help me cultivate my garden, you know, in whatever different ways that you can. So it's important for you to have that. So yeah, you may not be, your garden may not yet be as big as Nigeria, right? But you've started cultivating your garden. So that is the most important thing. Now make sure that your garden is bringing out enough food to help two of you live a decent life, you know. 
um, you can afford to feed yourself comfortably you can afford the basic things like health like you know feeding clothing yourself being able to buy yourself decent you know gifts not actually expensive gifts and like you know because those are signs things of love that you have to do so you should be able to at least be able to give decent and that's for most people when you get to a certain level in life, you are able to do that already. It's not necessarily like about earning two million naira per month. It's about like two of you, and you know, by the time you view each other's income as like family income, such that even if the guy is not making so much, if the lady is making so much, then it's enough because that's the family. That's where you view it from. You know, that's a different conversation for another day. But I think as long as your guardians, your guardians as a couple, you know, as um, Adam and as Eve, your guardians are producing enough fruit to take care of you. Then you can get married. In fact, as long as as your individual, you can take care of yourself. As my individual, I can take care of myself. I can feed. I can clothe, and I can house myself comfortably. Two of you coming together, that doesn't change anything. It means two of you coming together will still be able to take care of your house, and in fact, it becomes cheaper because two of you will stay under the same roof, and then the burden of feeding reduces because two of you can share, depending on your financial capacity, you know, you are both able to share the business responsibilities and all. So I don't think you have to wait till you have all the money in the world. And the fact that you're getting married does not stop you from achieving your dreams. Those are those are all conversations you can have yes, later on about, you know, yes. getting married, fears and unmarried and things. Maybe it's a content. I actually think that is just the truth. A lot of people think that, you know, after they get married, their dreams will get aborted or that's just yeah. the end of, you know, yeah. so... So, like, just to round up that, like I mentioned, kids are what make marriage expensive, right? So, if you if both of you get married and you feel you don't have the finances to have a kid now, you know, chill. Whatever, you know, family planning, vasectomy, um, vasectomy, you know, vasectomy, <laughs> anything that anything that you do that you know would, would um, support childbearing, you know, and after maybe two years, three years, you find a baby, you feel oh, you have enough money to bring in one more person into depression, and you go for a kid and you bring one more. So yeah, I think that's that's. Awesome. Okay, so what do you think about um, girls comparing their girlfriends to their ex? Have you ever compared me to your ex? You know, guys comparing their girlfriends, like, their current girlfriends, girlfriends to ex. their ex. Have you ever compared me to your ex? Have I like consciously or so, like conscious, like ever consciously, consciously, subconsciously? subconsciously. Yeah. I think it naturally happens subconsciously. You would even like even if you say oh you don't want to like you will. It could be good or it could be bad, right? Because you could have been in a bad relationship and then you're in a good relationship now, right? Or let me say you're in a relationship with a good person, right? And you know, you may not actually be a good person, compatible person, anyone, yeah. you know, because someone may be good and may not be compatible, okay. yeah. So, like, you just naturally compare, and like, oh wow, things are so different. So when you say, oh, things are so different, you've compared because you've already, before you say things are different, you've contrasted one to one, right? So, I think. Yeah, we, we all do it. I do it. Um, every guy, everybody. If anybody, I, anybody that says you don't <laughs> compare exes, I don't compare exes. Go to, hmm? I don't. She doesn't show much on me. Go to the comment section and put it there that you've never compared your current partner with your ex. I'll be I come get, to the comment I, section. I will tell you I have never compared you with my ex. That's a lie. There's nobody that can say you know, either in a good way or in a bad way, you know, you'd have compared. So the question now will now be, you know, is it a bad comparison or good comparison? That's you could put business and not good but, but I think everybody, in fact guys need to do it a lot. Okay, so the next question is a personal question. If you could change one thing about my body, what would you do? <laughs> body? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I actually know what it would be because before I started dating, I had a, an extremely flat stomach. But now, my Amala jeans are, <laughs> are coming. <laughs> are coming to play. Yeah, maybe that's, yeah. Yeah, so no, don't push what's into my mouth. I yeah, said no. it. Yeah, no, that's, that's it. You know, you've said it already. You already said you know what it would be. <laughs> so. Not the best. My tummy has come to stay. <laughs> So what do you think about feminists? Like what do, what does guys think about feminists? <laughs> <laughs> this subject is a very tricky matter okay. because what feminism very fast what feminism means to to people, you know, feminism means yeah, different Yeah, babe, babe, different babe, to be people. fair, I think you're a feminist. Like you're somebody that believes that, you know, they you believe in equal whatever. Before before you say before you say I'm femi- I'm feminist. Well, I'm talking about the Twitter kind of feminist. What do you think about those okay. people? Okay, okay, okay. 
Now, if that is what you are referring to in this case, I think those guys are extreme. So, for every ideology, there is always the, there are always the moderates, and there are always the far left, and there are the far right. No, so, I, like, that's the basic thing about ideologies, right? You have Christians, right? On this end, you have. On this side, you have the conservatives, you know, they don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that, you know, you have to be holy and that's only way God can accept you. And you have the, you are saved by grace and grace only. One safe for everyone. One safe for everyone, for you don't care whatever you do, if you like, whatever you like, go and whatever you like, do, you are still going to heaven. And then you have the moderates, and the moderates, you know, you have the moderates that are conservatively moderate, and you have the um far left moderate. far left yeah <laughs> i mean no, this far right far left you know but basically right so for every ideology you always have moderates and you always have i think i'm a moderate feminist right in the sense that i strongly believe and i advocate for it that everybody has an equal right to succeed in life everybody has an equal right to to live everybody nobody's nobody should cover their shine or their star because of another gender Right. I, 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 I won't use the word equal, so don't let me use the word equal. I, I like to use the word fair. Okay. Everyone has a fair right to live. So when I mean fair, like, you know, you have to be fair to people. I don't I don't see genders. You know, at my workplace I don't see genders. At my I don't I don't care. I don't see age. You know, some of these things don't you know, so many of these things don't matter to so age, gender and the likes, right? So I think everybody deserves but about the Twitter feminists, let's use that to cla- to classify what we are trying to discuss because I get what you're referring to. I think those are those guys are quite extreme. They are on the far, you know, the far right of of um, the feminism discourse, right? Where it now becomes I think there's this word for it now where they just naturally hate men. Some it has only degenerated to the point where they hate men. You know they don't like to they don't most they, they they would rather so if they see a lady maybe they are an employer of labor and they have a lady and a and a guy interviewing for a job right even if the guy is better than the lady they would hire the and, lady uh, right why because they just feel guys are bad they are domineering they just have that bad view about men right so i think they are very very wrong and um they need to to adjust and become much more different on their well, position there's anything i feel about feminists i feel pity because <laughs> for somebody to be like that the person must have gone through stuff you know to be candid well, you yeah. know going through you know since i went through like a week to this time like at a point mm-hmm. i really felt like if i'm someone who had not received enough love you know say for my mom or what have you like i might i might also grow up and be like i'm never going to allow my man be like this to me like i am never mm-hmm. ever so once you see any to, tendency so whenever I see any tendency i'm like just flare I'm up and understand. defend yourself so i think that at a point in time the person was have you know met with a very dominating you know maybe partner or father or what have you and the person needs to let me live so i just feel that they find that he yes. as soon as they can so i think this is where I would be stopping the vlog for today. Babe, thank you so much for coming and for bearing your heart. You spent more than 40 minutes already. Guys, 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 please let me know what you feel in the comment section and give your perspective about everything that might be where you talk about, you know. We want to learn from you too. So yeah, till we meet next week, guys. Don't forget that like, life is a cat. So you can fight it or resist it. The only way to fight it is to accept it. So speak your truth as the truth can help anyone out there. Till we meet next week. I love you guys.